What's up guys, Pixels to Life here and today in our Photoshop 101 tutorial series we will be expanding a little bit further on the selection tool and utilizing the blending mode options to create some web 2.0 buttons like the one you see on screen. So fire up your Photoshop and let's get right to it. So the blending mode options are a set of tools that you can use to stylize layers um, within your composition. Now you can do this in several different ways. Um, you can add depth, you can add definition, um, you can add texture. There's several different things that you can do with blending mode options. Um, today this tutorial specifically um, is going to focus on adding depth to um, your web 2.0 button like you see here with this subscribe button so let's go ahead and jump right into it here we're gonna open up a new composition um, and again we'll just stick with the large file size and I have a fairly light gray that almost blends in with my background um, for uh, my Photoshop but uh, that doesn't really mean anything you can really choose whatever color you want um, for the background because we're not really going to be working with it all that much now what you want to do is just draw out a rectangle for yourself um, like this with the selection tool that um, we discussed in the last video and then you can select a color I'm gonna take kind of a light red sort of maroon color I'm gonna create a new layer and fill in that selection and um, you know basically you have a button created here but this button is a little bit flat and uh, and not interesting doesn't catch the eye or anything like that so we want to liven it up a little bit give it some depth and uh, and really make it stand out so we're gonna do that with blending mode options over here in your layers palette um, you have your background layer and your layer one and your layer one is your button layer so what you want to do is right click and then right here second from the top is blending options if you click that it will open our blending options um, module here and you see that there are several options in here drop shadow um, several shadows glows bevel and emboss um, and then you've got a satin uh, color overlays uh, several different things that you can choose from here now most people's um, first instinct is to go right for the bevel and emboss because we're trying to add depth, um, which the bevel and emboss does, but it's a little, the edges are a little bit too hard um, for me, um, and it's just a little kind of, it reminds me of those old site builder sites uh, that you could build and put their little elements in it just it just doesn't look clean or sharp um, at all to me so we're gonna use a few different options to get that 3d that depth that we really want um, for this button so first of all if we're gonna start off with the drop shadow um, and the drop shadow we want to change this blend mode to normal and up the opacity to 100% now you can see around the outside of our button here um, we have our little drop shadow in the black color which is natural because shadows are black 120 angle now and typically I'd say take this use global light out of there um, just in case we change a few things we don't want that to be altered um, the distance we're going to set to 7 we're going to bump it up just a little bit and then this spread we're going to bump it way up to 40 and then just take down the size just a hair and uh, we'll move on from that so we have the drop shadow and it kind of looks like a little border right now but it will make more sense once we add the rest of our effects um, what we want to do next is an inner shadow. Now the inner shadow 
um, is a really nice tool um, because you can you know up the size and you can see instantly we are getting a little bit of depth here now we may have to alter this go back and alter this um, but for right now uh, that's what we want to use. So let's go ahead and bump the opacity up here uh, to about 90 and then take off our global light because again we don't want that to be affected by any other part of um, our blending options. The next order business is the inner glow. Now by default the inner glow renders this yellow glow here but what we're going to do is change it. Um, we're going to go to normal, bump it up to 100%, and then we're going to change this color to a lighter version of our base color. Uh, the way that I would describe it would be take the color that you started with and mix it with white, and whatever you come out with should be your inner glow color. Now, that's a really subtle effect there so we're going to just bump it up a little bit on the size to 9 and you can already see that we've got a good amount of depth and uh, and it looks a lot cleaner than uh, using that bevel and emboss function now we're going to go back up and alter the inner shadow uh, just take down the distance a little bit and uh, and the size is still good we just want to take down the distance just a little bit now the next thing we're gonna do is our gradient overlay now whenever you put this on here by default it gives you a white to black gradient um, which looks nice and helps with the depth especially with our uh, inner shadow and inner glow already on here but we want it to be a little bit more subtle and we don't want it to change the color of our button so we're going to change the blend mode to overlay so we'll get our red color back and then we're going to alter the gradient by clicking on the gradient here if you just click right in the gradient um, and we're going to take these sliders these are color sliders um, and you can add and subtract these we're going to take this down to about halfway then we're going to click here underneath the gradient to get a new color selector and we're going to add like a dark gray at the top here maybe a little bit more subtle there we go alright so now you can really start to see this popping off of your screen here um, so we're going to put one last touch on it here, maybe you just bump this down, there we go. One last touch which is going to be our stroke. And we don't really need to alter this in any way, it just gives a little definition to the edge. And, uh, and that is good to go there. Now, now we have a nice web 2.0 button it's got plenty of depth on it but what I want to do is I want to add the gloss effect so I'm going to come up here and grab my elliptical marquee tool and I'm going to drag it from end to end here and then expand it just a little bit to about the middle of our button here and we're going to go ahead and nudge it over so that it's in the center. Now, these corners are not selected, so that's a little bit of a problem. Um, if you watched our last video on the marquee tool, you can see I can grab the um, rectangular marquee, just go a little bit outside the edges here, and hold Shift to add to the selection. And you see there, it will add to the selection so that my corners are still included in here like so alright now I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna get my white color and my paint bucket and fill it in now that looks a little bit ridiculous so we're gonna go to our blend mode once again go to overlay 
and you can see we're starting to get this kind of glass looking effect on it now we're gonna take down the opacity just a hair uh, so it's not so overbearing down to about 60 percent now you can see on the outer edges where our marquee uh, selection has gone a little bit outside of the button so that's real easy to fix we'll just click on our button layer and then come up here to select and load selection now what this does is it makes a selection based on this layer right here so basically what we've done is it's an automated marquee tool and we don't want any of this white outside of the button so what we're gonna do is we're going to hit control shift I to do our inverse selection like we discussed Then we're gonna click on our gloss layer here and hit backspace and there you see now we have our nice little gloss effect over the button and all we have to do now is add our subscribe text like so position it on our button and we are done guys so that is how you create a web 2.0 button uh, with a gloss effect. Stay tuned next time where we continue our Photoshop 101 series. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.